You're listening to The Journey Podcast. What if the power to heal and transform has been within you all along? Join us for our 200th episode today to find out more. This episode contains adult subject matter and some listeners may be triggered by this content. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Petra Brunbauer, and with decades of experience with sadness, pain, anxiety, and stress, I finally figured out how to leave all that behind. And this podcast shows you how to break free permanently so you can reclaim your sanity and find the self-esteem and energy to go after the life you desire. With real talk about mental health, holistic healing, and the tough journey of coming out the other end. This is The Journey Podcast. Welcome to today's episode. We are celebrating our 200th episode today, and I would like to take a moment and thank each and every one of you for your support. You might have been a guest on the show, or you might be tuning in to listen. Thank you for spending your time with me in The Journey Podcast. I know there are lots of other choices out there. When I started this podcast two years ago, I could have never imagined the adventure it would take me on, the amazing people I would meet, the profound stories we would share, and the inspiring and thought-provoking topics we would discuss. My heart is full, and without further ado, let's kick off our celebration. Dr. Sue Mortar is a renowned international speaker, master of bioenergetic medicine, and a pioneer in quantum field exploration. Leveraging high-frequency energy patterns, she unlocks the complete spectrum of human potential. With over three decades of clinical expertise and a transformative awakening during meditation, Dr. Sue has developed visionary models and techniques, redefining living in creative genius and personal freedom. As the number one LA Times and USA Today bestselling author of The Energy Codes, The Seven Step System to Awaken Your Spirit, Heal Your Body, and Live Your Best Life, Dr. Sue shares profound insights on activating untapped energy and neurocircuitry within the body for healing and living into our full capacity. Her mission is to empower individuals to embrace their hidden potential and manifest their true essential selves. Founder of the globally taught coursework, The Energy Codes, and creator of the Body Awake Certified Yoga Program, Dr. Sue is a co-creator of the Bioenergetic Synchronization Technique. Serving on professional licensing boards and as adjunct faculty at Michigan State University Medical School, she provides guidance on integrative healthcare leadership. In 1987, Dr. Sue established Mortar Health Center, laying the foundation for the Mortar Institute for Bioenergetics, a visionary organization focused on teaching self-healing techniques rooted in quantum science and higher consciousness. Through three schools, the School of Energy Medicine, School of Body Awake Yoga, and School for Higher Consciousness and Personal Development, Dr. Sue empowers the global community to heal, awaken to their highest potential, and create a life they love. Here is my 200th interview for the Journey podcast. Let's meet Dr. Sue Mortar. Hi, Dr. Sue. It's so great to have you on the podcast today. I've been Uh really looking forward to getting to chat with you because your work and, of course, your book, The Energy Codes, is just such a fascinating topic to talk about today, and I can't wait to dive into that more. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, Thank you so, so much. I absolutely love diving into a deep, rich conversation about what matters most in life, and so uh, I have a suspicion that that's where we're headed and I look forward to where we get to go today. Yes, me too. I've been reading up and and watching videos to get prepared, and this is also one of my favorite topics, what is important in life. So if you're okay with that, let's start off with a little bit about yourself and and who you are and, and what you're doing today that is creating such a revolutionary effect in the world and this method that you have developed a little bit about how all of that got started would be wonderful Mm. oh sure my pleasure so i came upon all of this quite honestly i was 
raised in an environment where my father was sort of a pioneer in energy medicine. And he was very devoted to, in his research, um, understanding the relationship between our thoughts and our emotions and the effect on the physical body in terms of it healing itself, as well as um, proactively moving in any direction of, of strengthening or, or developing or evolving our, ourselves in, in any way, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And, and so he was in the field of chiropractic. He was naturally trained to understand the inner workings of how the body operates. And then he became very interested in why chiropractors ended up having to treat the same symptom over and over um, even though it was a natural means and better than taking more and more medications, he still was curious as to why that wasn't, you know, really resolving circumstances with the chiropractic treatment, the adjustments. And so he was drawn into the, the, the inquiry of what makes vertebra move out of position again and again and again. Why does it keep moving out of position? And, and he found that it had to do with with the energy flow in a body that was either creating tone in musculature and organs and glands or not. And then his research took him to, to really inquiring about, well, what affects that energy flow? If, if energy and vitality is what is ultimately allowing for a healing process to take place or not, then what is it that would block that energy or weaken the energy flow or distort it or disturb it in, in some way? And he found that it was in fact, unresolved emotion. So I was raised in this conversation about how important it is for us to understand our own emotional states and to truly begin to own them. And I went to school and you know became a doctor and opened a clinic and started treating my patients with all of these principles that I knew. And in addition to that, I started getting headaches and uh, I couldn't fix them with the with the treatments and the modalities that I had known and grown up with and so forth. And so I sought out meditation and uh, instantly I started having transcendental experiences in meditation, multidimensional openings started happening, r radically changing my life in a very dramatic way, uh, opening me to realities and realms that I had no idea existed. It wasn't something I was trying for. I wasn't shooting for enlightenment, which several of the people in the meditation groups and communities that I was in were kind of obsessed with this idea of enlightenment. And I, I had no idea what they were talking about. And then all of a sudden I was experiencing it. And, um, and so I would, I would describe my experiences to people who'd been meditating for 30 years. And, and they were like, you know, wow, I never had experiences like that. And so I knew that that I was on to something. And I became really um, kind of obsessed with figuring out how was this happening in my life? What was happening for me? And how could I ultimately embody it or benefit from it and, and then teach others how to do the same? You know, why, why was this happening in my world? I, I was elevated into a state and I'll just add this little thing here, and then we can return to conversation instead of me just taking over. But I just want to share this piece that in one of my experiences, I was exalted into a state. I was surrounded by a brilliant, brilliant light. So, so bright. It was 10 times brighter than the brightest day in, in the desert that I had ever experienced. And I could see in every direction, in front of me, behind me, above, below. I could see the earth below me um, all at the same time. I could see the earth below me about the size of a marble. That's how exalted I was, how high up in consciousness I was. And I was me, but I wasn't in a physical body. I was, I was literally a ray of light and I was embedded into the earth beneath me up to what would have been my knees. And, and I could feel that this brilliant light was, was coming down through this ray that I was. Um, and it was becoming a new vibration. It was becoming something different. And the best way that I can describe it is this light was becoming love as it was passing through me and as if I was feeding it to the planet. And I instantly knew that this is the truth about all of us, that we are actually states of consciousness, streams of consciousness, rays of light that are embedding ourselves into this physical domain, into this physical reality, into these physical bodies where it looks like we're having this physical experience as different people. And in reality, uh, this isn't who we are here on earth in these bodies. It's what we're doing, that we are actually existing at a much higher level 
of consciousness and that we are projecting ourselves into this realm for the experience of awakening to the truth of who we are. Now, that might sound like, a, whoa, a, a really huge idea, but it's, it is definitely a truth that I have been witnessing and experiencing and sharing and teaching about for the last 24 years since this began happening for me. And, and, and just lastly, I'll say this, in that state, that exalted state where I could see in every direction in a brilliant light simultaneously, uh, there was nothing missing. There was nothing broken. There was nothing wrong. There was nowhere to go, no th nothing to become, nothing to achieve. I, I was already that. All of us are already that. It, it truly was a matter of perception here in this project that we're in. Can we, will we allow ourselves to perceive that version of ourselves? Because if and when we do, we begin to open to this channel, this ray of light that is constantly carrying abundance and information and intuition and the answers that we seek. But we've been operating as a separate self. We think that this version of us that's in this body is the whole of us, and it's not. And as long as we perceive it that way, we end up in a state of lack and a state of pain and a state of loss or something is missing or something is broken or something is wrong. And that disillusionment has us in a very contracted and stressed state of being that is completely unnecessary. And it certainly looks appropriate to us when we are stuck in this limited reality, this idea of a limited reality. So. So that was a big, long story, but I know that it's everyone's story is why I uh, felt to go into it, that every one of us is in this journey of waking up to this truer version of, of what we are. And as we begin to put the pieces together and allow them to be true for us, things change. We heal, we evolve, we awaken, and we begin to look at life in a very, very different way. So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and your insights that you gained through those experiences. I find this fascinating because I feel a lot of the times when I talk to other people that many of us have become quite separated from that energy that you plugged into, that you connected with. And a lot of the problems are happening because we are separated from that energy. And that reminds me a little bit that on my own path, people kept telling me, well, you already have everything you need within you. And it seemed like such a, a strange thing for them to say. But now that you're sharing these experiences, it sounds to me like you made that exact same discovery that we already have the love within us, the abundance within us, these abilities to connect into energies, to do self-healing within us, that everything is already there. So having had those experiences and and having had those insights, did that change your work with your clients at all? Did that affect your practice and how you approached healing from that experience? Oh, did it? I stopped looking at people as if they had a problem. I stopped looking at their pain patterns and their symptoms. And I started looking at the wholeness that I knew was underneath that. And I started drawing that up and out into the surface of their own awareness. I started speaking to the one who is okay. I started exchanging with them as if it was true about them. And they started healing faster. They started responding faster and staying better longer in between their visits to my clinic. And they began having deeper questions about life instead of getting caught up in the dramas or the traumas that were happening as if they had they the trauma had a hold of them as if the drama was in control of their lives it it ceased in my world because i knew it wasn't true and and while we do experience our accidents and our incidents and our our upsets and we do get fired from jobs and asked for divorces and injure ourselves and those things do occur but what I began to see was there's a reason behind everything that's happening. And it's all actually able to serve you if you let it. And it's not just about having a better attitude and looking for the silver lining around the cloud or you know, looking at the bright side of, of the situation. It's more than that. It's a real deep appreciation for who and what we actually are. 
And when we start to develop that as a possibility, we begin to automatically look and see into life from a different perspective. And we're not looking to survive. We're not looking for who to blame. We're not looking for what's wrong. We're recognizing that every single thing that is happening in our lives is refining us and polishing us and developing our ability to see through the veil and to clearly walk right through that veil as if it's not true because it's not. The limitations that we perceive are perceptions. And while they look very real, they only look so real because we've been looking that way um, for a long time. And our parents were looking at life that way and their parents were looking at life from that perspective. And so our entire realities and our, and our nuances and our cultural norms and our ways of perceiving life and our attitudes, all of it is influenced by this limited perspective. And so we keep recreating the limited perspective because we adopt what they thought and we adapt in in terms of of the limitations that are around us thinking that well this is what everyone does and so i have to do this too and and we suppress things like our imagination and our intuition and our our true passion and desire to create we suppress it in order to fit in or to do the right thing or to be smart or to um, navigate life the way everybody else seems to be navigating it but it's the blind leaving the, leading the blind and and so I can't encourage people enough and began doing this in my practice to dream and to allow their way to be a good way, to be enough, that their authentic way of responding or engaging or dreaming up or, or creating projects for themselves is more than enough. It's not that it needs to be adequate. <laughs> it's more than enough. It's more than what's needed. And it's the reason that we come. So everything in my practice began to turn to what I call the front side of the model, meaning uh, looking at life from this perspective of what if I was okay? What if there wasn't a problem? What if this wasn't an issue? What if this was in support of me? And when I started training people to think like that, they started physically healing faster. And so what I began to establish was a direct relationship for people between what they are feeling and, uh, and how their body is responding. So what we're thinking influences what we feel, but we can also interrupt our thoughts and just choose to feel a certain way. We can choose to cultivate a particular vibration in the body, even if the mind hasn't figured out how to accept some situation or to, or to find the logic in some scenario so that we can lay it down. We can learn to lay it down before it's logical to do so. And you know that's that leap of faith where people have to trust that if I just get okay with the situation, the situation will change. When we think the opposite, we've been trained to believe that as soon as the situation changes, I can be okay with it. But But the world is at the effect of us. Science is showing us beyond the shadow of a doubt that we have an effect on our reality. We are changing the flow of the tiniest little particles of energy and the way that they gather and formulate into shapes and circumstances and people and opportunities. We are shaping our reality all the time. But no one has taught us how to do that more effectively. It isn't just with our mind. Although our mind plays a role, our body has to be involved in it too. When the mind and the body and the breath and consciousness are working together in one direction, we have an ability to heal things and to change our life circumstances in ways that people have not begun to dream about. And uh, and the beauty is that quantum science is showing us that this is an absolute, it's an absolute, that we we find what we're looking for. And so we have to train ourselves to be out there on the front side of that, being a creator instead of a re- responder or a reactor. And, you know, and that's, it's a beautiful process to learn how to do because it starts to engage our, all of our faculties and we feel alive and we feel challenged and we feel adventurous. And uh, instead of feeling apathetic and afraid and, you know, shut down like so many people are. Um, so 
my the short answer to your question would be yes it had a big effect on what i did in my clinic with people <laughs> and and it's helped you know <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people since yeah. then i yeah. love the passion that when you talk <laughs> about that i can just tell this is something you're so passionate about and yeah. of course it does affect all of us and we do pay i feel a high price if we suppress those energies if we suppress our intuition or connection with things we do pay a high, very high price for that often in the form of a disease or illness or unhappiness as you've said so yeah. the fact that when we discover that we can affect our reality that we are in a sense co-creators of that reality with the people around us and with the world and the universe it really changes the entire perspective it did for me at least on what we can do while we're here on this planet in this life so Yes, a very, for myself as well, very passionate <laughs> subject to talk about. Now, you said that that was sort of the front end of that model. So is there a back end to that yeah. model as well? Is, is there yeah. another side to what you were describing? Well, sure. You know, the front side of the model is operating as a creator, uh, one who's ingeniously um, generate, generating a life experience, deciding what their life experience is going to be, not trying to control people, but managing their internal environment, regardless of their external circumstances. So that's the front side of the model, being a creator. The back side of the model is being trapped in the victimization, the unawareness that we have such power, the idea that that I don't have enough money or I don't have enough time or I don't have a love in my life or I don't have the ability to heal or these are my circumstances. I was born into them. I don't know how to, to change such dramatic you know, aspects of life. Um, and so I don't even try. You know, The backside of the backside of the model would be that, not even aware that there's an option. And I honestly have to say, even though I grew up in an environment where my father was, was a genius, he was literally... Um, innovating, healing modalities for people that had never been created before. He was bringing it in at a time when, when energy and medicine were never talked about together in the same conversation. Uh, it, it, was, it was a world that he got ridiculed for being in, and yet he knew it, and he walked it, and there was no, no turning back. And, um, and even though I was raised in that environment, inside of myself, personally, whenever uh, I think because he was so strong that whenever he laid down the law, I kind of reacted to that as if that was the law. Again, externalizing my power the way everyone else has done in one form or another, whether it was to you know medicine or to not having enough finances to do what we want to do or to not being able to meet the one we love and, or that kind of thing. And so I had externalized my own power because I lived under the roof with a very powerful person. And so I can remember the day that I realized, oh my gosh, I could have a different thought than the one that he has because he was so potent, right? I could actually have my own option here. And, and when we start to even have such realizations, we move from the backside of the backside of the model toward the front side of the model. So along the way, we move into a realm where we perceive that circumstances are tough, but I can make a difference. I can change it. Um, this is bad or wrong, this thing that's going on, but I can survive it. Um, and that's a stage that I call the front side of the back side of the model, if you will. All right. So it's bad circumstances, but I'm gonna, nobody's going to get me down and keep me down. I'm going to pick myself up by the bootstraps and keep going on. And it, it creates a a sense of fortitude and a strength and some grit, but it isn't the end of the game. There is so much more for us to discover. And on the front side of the model, we're realizing instead, there's nothing wrong, that this is happening to polish me and to refine me. And in fact, I requested that such things would occur so that I could polish myself and refine myself and develop and evolve. And you know, that right there is kind of a tough thing for some people to embrace because they're like, how would I have ever requested abuse or abandonment? How would I have requested, you know, such devastating circumstances that I have experienced in my life? And I can speak with experience there as well. You know, I, I was abused by uh, family members that, that I would have had, I would have thought there was an inherent trust that there was something that I could count on from, from those people. And in reality, I was 
um, I was I was handled in a very inappropriate manner. And it caused me to question myself and to question love and to question trust and to question, you know, all of it. And and I have an appreciation for for what someone has to go through in order to turn that around for themselves. Uh, I also experienced abandonment where people did not stand up for me when uh, when it was appropriate for them to do so. They did not have my back when I certainly would have in similar circumstances where the roles reversed. And and so I understand. And I also have to say that I am so grateful for all of those experiences because they 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 prompted me into the path of dis- of searching and discovering and finding a version of myself that I likely never would have found had I not been faced with such circumstances in in my outer world. And so when I say that we are in charge and that we do request and that it does serve, that I I say it with with direct experience. I say it not only with my own experience, but the experience of the hundreds of thousands of people that I have worked with over the last 25 years to, to help them uh, understand this power within themselves as well. And by choosing this perspective, they too are healing. So it isn't just me. I'm not special. I just found a, an intense path and discovered a passionate, powerful version of myself inside of that intensity. And I am very devoted to helping other people find the same because I do know that it's what this planet is serving if we let it it's why we come the duality the stress the strain the conflict the the pressure that we feel here is by design it is here to polish us and to refine us and to cause us to to go within to find that version of us that's sitting there waiting for um you know it's it's moment it's day in the sun and we have the power to offer that up to ourselves we just have to learn now, the step-by-step processes that can let that unfold for us, and it, and it can. So that's why I wrote the book that I wrote. Is a, it's to allow for people to uh, begin. You know, where do I start? It seems so huge. Um, there's a, there are steps that we can each take that will allow us to, to develop an ownership about our power in this life. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I feel this by listening to you that if you hadn't had this path and these experiences, maybe a lot of the things that you're now offering to the world wouldn't have even come into existence, like your book or some of the work that you're doing. So this path and, and this version of yourself that you are today and that you are now is the result of all of those struggles that you went through and those experiences that you had. So we never know um, where that path leads and and what version of ourselves comes out. But I do always like to think that it is something that you, as you said, we requested and it is a path that we are on for a reason and for a purpose. So, and um, with that, I, I'm curious about the energy codes because the book that you wrote sounds to me a bit like, um, like you're teaching people how to, to, tap into that energy that you've been describing throughout our conversation. So what are the steps in the energy codes? What are some of the things that you're teaching people and and what does that help them with? Sure. Um, You know, I, I, I slept on the floor of my closet as a kid. I was so intimidated. I was so shy. I was freaked out about life. And the reason I was freaked out was because there was something I felt inside and it wasn't being met on the outside. It wasn't a match. And so I withdrew. And this is what so many people do. And I want people to understand that in this book, there's a reason that you withdrew and the book explains it. Or there's a reason that you shot out and became an overachiever and tried to go make life happen no matter what. There's a reason that we did one of those two things because under that dissonant energy, we have those two choices. We either withdraw thinking that there's something wrong with us that we need to hide and protect, or uh, we think there's something wrong right here and I'm out of here. I'm going to go make it better. I'm going to go make a way for myself. And, and this person becomes super assertive and they might step over 
their own wisdom. They might leave themselves behind in the process. And, and it, while it can be successful in achieving, it's not the ultimate answer. We need both and. We can't hide and we can't run, you know, neither one. So in the energy codes, what I'm teaching people to do is to come inside, to anchor themselves within the body, to find how to do that and to develop the capacity to know when they're, when they're anchored in their body and when they're not when they're living in their heads or when they're up in their mind field in the mental body and they're not even in their own physical reality. They're not even here in the driver's seat of their vehicle that they've created to have this life experience. And so they can know the difference. So some of the first steps are to anchor in the body and begin to know the difference when I'm there and when I'm not, when I'm, when I'm in an altered state, when I'm out in some, um, you know, over, over emotional or over mental version of myself, I can bring it back home. I can land and I can feel it. And in the process of doing that, I also enhance my physical healing because if we're not in the body to heal it, we are the healer. And if we're not in the body, the body's not healing. And so kidney problems or ankle problems or hip problems or shoulder problems, there's a reason that they persist. And it's because we're not living in those areas of the body the way that we could be. And if we were, because we are the healing energy itself, those aspects of us would heal. So that's the anchoring, uh, the anchoring code. And I won't go through each of the codes, but I'll just go step by step and, and say that in general, the next thing that we do is we start recognizing that there is... There is a wisdom in this body, that there is a way that the body operates as a translator to the universal intelligence. So picture this, everyone. There are billions of bits of information bombarding you every millisecond. And if you're living in your head, you can't translate them all because that's not the way the mind works. But if you're living in your body, your body operates as a filtering, translating device. That's what it is. It takes this cosmic intelligence, this universal energy, and it starts translating it and stepping it down for human con consumption. And so the wisdom that happens in our, in our, but just below the navel is happening because those billions of bits of information land at the cellular level, little antennas on the surface of your cells pick up that information. They translate it through epigenetics into hormonal um, chemistries or neurotransmitive uh, chemistries that become messages that start rising up through your body. And they rise up through your own personal uh, version of self. They arrive in your heart. They get transmitted into or transduced into what has heart and meaning to you. We know from the Institute of Heart Math and the research that they bring forward is, is showing us that there are, there are synapses that occur in the heart that are just like the synapses that occur in the brain. There's a brain in the heart that is translating this information that is coming from the cosmos, arriving at your gut, rising up to the heart, rising up then from the heart through the throat up to the brain in your head in the form of ideas and images and thoughts and curiosities and, um, and of capacity, a perception of self. That's how we decide who we are. If we're living in our body, all of that gets to happen without interruption. If we're living in our head, that's happening, but we don't reap the benefits of it. We don't even perceive those kinds of notions. They skip right past because when we're living in our head, we're stuck in duality. The mind operates in duality. And so every moment that we have a moment of happiness and joy and peace and love, there's also the lurking idea that it could go away, the possibility that the pendulum could swing in the opposite direction, and we would have none of that. We would have no peace. We would have no joy. No one would love us. Things could disappear. We worry. We protect. We guard. We prepare, all because, unnecessarily, all because we're living in, in a world of duality. We're living in our heads and our minds. So when we live in the body, the energy codes begin to show you how to do that, how to translate the information, how to, to interpret this universal intelligence in a way that allows for you to be very clear on who you are, what you're doing, 
and how to operate in a way that is constant, consistent, and also available for the flux that is necessary when plans don't go as planned, when life happens in a different way and you need spontaneity and you need the security of knowing we can shift gears right now and still be okay. That's the kind of stuff that the energy codes bring forward. So there's an anchoring code. There is there is all sorts of, of ways for us to uh, heal. There is a healing code. There is a, uh, a love code, a, a way for us to have an understanding of the role that love plays. There is a chemistry code. There are all sorts of ways that we begin to um, utilize this energy in the form that it was meant to be utilized and to see in a creative manner instead of seeing from a survivor standpoint. And so the energy codes begin to step-by-step step move us in the direction of being able to tap that energy and live as that connected being that we truly are meant to be. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. And of course, we will be linking um, to where people can find this book, where they can find out a bit more about that. So if they've been inspired by this episode, they can have a read for themselves through the energy codes. And I would imagine once you make your way through these energy codes, if you're open to it, and if, if you're taking some of these things on board, there's quite a, a perspective shift that happens and quite a transformation as you're connecting back to those energies. What have you noticed in the clients that you've worked with or for yourself also? What do you notice when you're tapping into these energy codes? How does that mm. transform your, your life and then how you look at things? Sure. So, you know, one of the codes is the clearing code. So it when someone's triggered, uh, when someone's upset, when someone is recognizing that they don't allow themselves to say yes when they really want to, when they hold back, when they don't jump out and and be, you know, a leader in in their relationship or in their community or in some project or at work or whatever, uh, there there are obstacles that are um, perceived. And really, what those obstacles are are gaps in our synapsing. It's gaps in our ability to perceive the deep wisdom that's rising from inside of us. And so, and so. Uh, the clearing code allows us to figure out what it is that's actually in the way, because we're never upset for the reasons that we think we are. There's actually something else going on that was already in place. And this circumstance of life triggered it or tripped it or poked it or activated it in some way. And it's all happening so that we can wake up. It's all happening so that we can realize, wow, I have some circuits that I haven't really put in place. I haven't really connected the dots and I haven't built a super highway from my gut through my heart up to my head. So I'm not perceiving the wisdom that is here. And so in the clearing code, we identify what that actually is. What is the interference? What? How do we identify that? And then what do we do about it? And how do we clear it? How do we clean that up? And, and really build a flowing path. And when people start to do that, they heal. They heal physically, they heal mentally, emotionally. So people become less afraid. They become more comfortable, more calm, no matter what's happening. You know, we're living in a very divisive world right now because humanity is trying to birth itself into unity. And to do so, we have to experience duality to the point that we're sick of it. We're tired of arguing and disagreeing and we're tired of the conflict and and now we're interested in something better so we're evolving and the energy codes shows us how to do that with grace and as such people become more comfortable they become more clear and they become capable of holding the space for a possibility instead of knee-jerk reacting in fear um, as so many of us do in so many of the circumstances that are prevalent in our world right now and um, people heal physically. We've had people heal from asthmas and allergies and, and their visual prescriptions and, and be able to prevent needing to have surgeries that are scheduled for orthopedic surgeries for, for hips and knees and back surgeries. And we have all sorts of healing from chronic degenerative disease conditions from you name it across the spectrum. And uh, people coming, be, being able to come down off of medications that they are on that are that are causing them to feel lethargic and disconnected and and suppressed in so many ways. And you know, speaking of suppression and depression, we have so many people uh, 
elevating their consciousness, finding hope and feeling joy in their lives for the first time in decades, they report to us that they haven't felt inspired or felt their heart feel free in forever. And they feel younger than they've felt in 20 years. We have 80 year olds to in the in the work in, in their upper 80s. And I've even worked with a 94 year old uh, in recent years where they would say they felt younger than they felt in 40 and 50 years, which is, you know, it's just so inspiring. We don't we don't have to check out and just decide that we're getting old. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be the the the, the truth of it. And uh, for the younger people, they're taking it up so rapidly because they haven't learned all the all of the limitations that that have been misperceived and and they resonate with this information. They get it. And so they're jumping forward and becoming so crystal clear and confident and able to find a version of themselves that society hasn't really been nurturing in the last 30 years. And so um, in, they're finding a, an entirely uh, additional layer of of benefit from the energy codes work. And they're they're really tapping into their genius in ways and and cultivating new work projects and new business ventures because they're putting the pieces together from this work. So I could go on and on, but I just want to say that on every level, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, people are responding, they're waking up, they're integrating when they start to use these practices. The practices, by the way, are meant to be utilized while you're living life. You don't have to carve out an extra hour every day to do these practices. They're meant to guide you in a moment when you have a reaction to something, do this. Real time, while you're having the reaction, do this. And you're not only going to be able to handle the situation, you're going to be carving new neurocircuitry to be able to prevent even having such reactions in the future. So it's not just, you know, satiating, you know, quelling some problem, um, you know, putting a bandaid on it. It's really working at the causal level of life uh, from the very perspective that we perceive these, these issues as problematic when actually they're trying to show us how big we are, how magnificent we are, um, instead of trying to beat us down or take us out of the game. They're trying to lift us up and show us that we're more than we think we are. We've just been playing small and didn't even know it. Yeah, it sounds like amazing transformations can happen with that. And as long, it's almost like a, a coming home to our own energies again, our own brilliance our own light our own healing blueprint we're returning to that through opening up that connection to that energy so i yes. definitely would recommend for our listeners to go find the book again we'll be linking to that and outside of this book how can listeners connect with your work um, with you with some of the services or programs that you offer what do you have up and coming for our listeners to connect uh. with well, we're always doing something. We have so much. I'm always teaching and always putting things out. We have all sorts of of um, free things that people can do just to see, learn more and be exposed to this beautiful community of people that have come together and that are studying this and be exposed to, to all of that. Uh, there are opt-ins for um, uh, e-books and and meditations that they that people can uh, listen to and get a sense of how to slide down into this work. And there are video series that are that are available for people that uh, they can see. We have all sorts. We have a YouTube channel. We have all sorts of of things that we do. I also am directly offering live every month a um, a free a complimentary healing transmission, so people can drop into that. Um, and and participate. It's the last Wednesday of eight, each month. It's at 8.30 Eastern time. Uh, I also teach um, a short answer online. Um, it's a free on Facebook Live, uh, the third Wednesday of each month, if people are interested in that. And so I come in and for 20 minutes, just just give something someone can be doing to improve their life from an energy uh, medicine standpoint, a quantum science standpoint, steeped in deep wisdom of how to know the difference of how to apply all these beautiful things that science is showing us. And from a clinical standpoint, the things that, you know, the best practices, the ways that people have healed the most. Um, 
we also do have a membership for Body Awake Yoga, which might sound kind of a different topic, but it's a huge thing that have helped. We have thousands and thousands of people that are around the world that are coming together to do this embodiment practice of yoga. It's not just yoga. It's higher consciousness in, in, anchored in the core of your body while you're going through yoga asanas. So you don't have to be a yogi. You don't have to be that. But if you are, um, you know, that's that's great too. But what I'm doing is teaching people how to build neurocircuitry, the very things that we've been speaking about today, while we're moving the body. And we're moving the body into these sacred geometries, which is what yoga is, which allows energy to move through the body more easily, which allows healing to happen. So people don't really know what what that's about. So uh, so we're we're providing that and there's a membership uh, for that that is that these are very inexpensive memberships where people can plug in, learn so much about how it all fits together um, at the same time that in real time they're building the the circuitry to improve their own vitality uh, and self-healing capacity. Wonderful. Lots of I also methods. I also am teaching. Yeah. I'm teaching so many courses. There are there are lots of courses. And just go onto our website, drsuemorder.com, and see um, short courses, weekend courses, year-long study programs. It's it's all there um, because uh, I know what it takes for people to turn their lives around. And so I'm offering it on every level for people. So Wonderful. Thanks it sounds like a, a lot of resources. <laughs> and we will be linking to all of Dr. Sue's offerings in the show notes as well. So you can find the links to the website, the YouTube channel, the offerings, we'll link to the book and make sure that you have all of that available at your fingertips. And as we uh-huh. wrap up, I just want to thank you again for joining me today for it's a very special episode. Actually, we're celebrating our 200th episode on the podcast with you today. So I just want to thank you for coming here and sharing your wisdom on this fantastic topic and celebrating that milestone with us. So thank you so much for for being here today. And it was a wonderful conversation that I'm sure our listeners are going to absolutely love. Beautiful. My joy. And and, and thank you for inviting me and thank you for having me as your 200th uh, episode. That's pretty exciting stuff. And, you know, there when you've been doing this 200 times, you've established a real solid uh, energetic pattern for people to be plugging into. And I want to thank you for doing that. Um, our world needs to gather and to hear and to be guided in these ways. And so I deeply appreciate what you're doing on the planet to provide a space for people to come and to learn and to awaken. And so it's been an honor to be a part of that with you here today. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. My heart feels so full at the moment with with Uh, all this amazing energy. And it is a a, a co-creation between all of us doing some part of the work in all different kinds of ways and bringing that together. So Yeah. yeah, thank you for all of that. Thank you for your wisdom, all the things that we've learned today. And let's carry that out into the world. We are going to air this episode very shortly and everyone gets to plug into that. So thank you again, Dr. Sue. And have a wonderful day and take care of yourself. Uh, Thank you. All right. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen in. If you enjoy the Journey podcast, please support us by subscribing, sharing on social media and leaving us a review. We appreciate you. And you can find more of The Journey on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and our website, thejourney.com. Sending you love and courage and see you next time.